hello everyone uh, this is my first ever video so let me introduce myself first i'm lahiru fernando i am a rpa solution architect and certified ui path developer and also a senior engineer in data warehousing and business interaction so why i thought of uh, creating this video is because i have seen many post in ui path forum on global exception handling and there are few questions around it for the community so i thought of creating a video to let you guys know on how to use the global exception handler and what are the benefits of it so to start with uh, in you have bus studio there are two ways to get the global exception handler into your workflow solution one is through this new option over here and you can click on global handler that will actually create a template of the global handler as you see here uh, and the other approach is you can download any available version from from the internet or the ui go platform and add it to the solution manually so what you have to do is if you are to add it manually go to the solution folder and paste the xml file here and that will show your file over here once you refresh the project file to add it to the solution you need to do a small change in the project dot uh, json file so what you need to do is open it in uh, editable notepad and under runtime option you have this line but you what you are mentioning here is the exact location of the global handler xml file so since in my solution i have it in the root folder i don't have a folder path in front of the xml file if you are creating the xml file within a different folder you can add the folder path here so that's the change you need to do and it will work without a problem and you don't need to call it anywhere or invoke it anywhere in case of an exception it will automatically uh, get executed so to demonstrate that i have a sample created here uh, so what happens in my sample workflow is you have a simple right line to say the process has started and i have a try catch activity and a simple input dialog which accepts a value to an integer variable as you see here and so basically you need to provide a numerical value otherwise it will throw an error so that's the test case what i am trying to show you and if all that goes well we have a nice message box here and in case you did not enter any numerical value the try catch will catch it and give you a different kind of a message so what happens with the global handler is it will try to read it will retry to a failed activity again and again until the defined number of retry attempts and see whether it can resolve the error by itself so this is how we create a global exception handler so in the first assign activity i have here hold on before getting there so the global exception handler accepts two arguments one is the error info and the one is the result which goes as a output argument so in the error info it will get all the 
information about the error that occurred when executing your workflow and based on that it will decide what you are going to do and the result argument acti uh, argument is the action item that you are going to give whether to retry uh, the failed activity or to uh, continue with the rest of the activities or to about the entire workflow so those can be defined within the global handler and apart from that based on the error info we get we can get, get a lot more information from that like the activity which affected with the error so let's first get the activity so i have this assign activity here and i'm using the error info as shown here and i'm getting the activity information and the name of the activity so apart from that you have the you can get the id as well so let's for now we will use the name and so the affected activity variable i have created within the global handler will hold the affected activity name and you can see few more variables here like the retry which is a hard coded value and also the retry count so the retry variable here will actually define how many times you are going to retry a failed activity so i have mentioned uh, it as three which means you will retry the same activity three times in case it runs into an error maximum three times so then i have a, another uh, log message activity so that i can see what is the error and the and the exception information so i have added the activity name just in front of the exception so that i can see which activity has affected and i'm getting the retry count next so based on the retry count we can perform various actions so every time the global ex handler is executed the retry count will increment so that is captured like this so in the error info it will pass the retry count as well so what we need to do is we need to capture that into a, another variable like what i have done here and since i'm retrying this three times i need to specify whether i'm after all three attempts what i'm going to do whether to continue retrying or to continue the execution with the rest of the activities or to abort the entire uh, workflow so that's what i'm going to do here and that's why i'm using the retry count so what I am checking here is whether the retry count is less than the defined retry attempts here and if it is less than the limit in the if condition I have another assign activity which assigns the action to the output argument result so that is assigned like we have a uh, option called error action under ui path activities and contracts so using the error action we have a couple of options whether to abort continue or ignore the error or to retry so because in my scenario i'm going to retry this and because and because of that i will be using the retry option and if the assigned limit 
and the, once the retry count has reached the limit, I want it to abort the execution first. So I have a couple of write line activities to see which one is executing. And in the else part of this condition, I have another assigned activity similar to what we have on the other side. And there I'm going to specify abort because right now I'm going to try the abort option. And it will be assigned to the result output error action uh, argument. Uh, so let's try this. And what I'm going to do here, as I explained, I'm going to accept a numerical value. And I have a try catch, which will catch the exception. So let's see how this works. And I'm going to run this. And here it is except asking me for a value. So I'm going to provide some characters. That's not working. So, so why this uh, input dialog came up again is because of the exception handler. So I'm, the program accepts a numerical value and I'm providing a set of characters which it cannot convert because I haven't specified the conversion there. And let's try it again. And this is the second attempt. So the first attempt is the normal execution. And in case of an error, it will uh, retry it three, three more times. So it will basically populate, pop up the input dialog four times. So let's try it. And it stopped. So this is the error that is going to show you. The workflow was aborted by the user. Uh, so, now as you see here, now it didn't execute the catch section of the try catch. This message box didn't appear. The reason is, each time it's trying this <coughs> to accept a numerical value, I'm providing a character and it cannot continue it keeps on retrying and once the retry, retry limit is reached and specifying the program to abort and it will stop the entire execution there so if you want to continue with that error we can mark this as continue so this will allow you to execute the catch segment of the package so, and over here we can see the previous execution log so we have the start process and this is the error log that I'm going to that I'm logging here so I have the activity name and the activity error so you can see here the activity name is input dialog and the rest of it is the uh, error information so this is the first attempt the first normal run and it's retrying for the first time same information the second retry the third retry and you are voting <laughs> so let's try with the continue so i have specified the continue option here and let's change this Continue just to see the error log and now I'm going to continue this. <coughs> so again you have this option. Let's give it let's try the same way. So I'm providing the characters again again and then you can see the catch segment of the try catch activity executed because i'm specifying the program to continue even though there is there and the try catch will catch the exception and show you the message box 
so now let's try with a normal we'll provide the accurate information first time i'm going to give a wrong value and again second time now i'm going to give the expected input as a set of numerical values and that will show you the message box saying you got the end of the process which is this so that's how the global exception handler works so you can basically retry the same activity for more than one time and until the error is resolved or if it is not resolved you can decide whether to continue with that or whether to abort the program or you can even ignore the error so there are different ways of doing it and this is a simple example of using the global exception handler so thank you for watching and see you in a another video